Next on Dragon's Den came Ken and Brian from Brian Farnet with their solution to all the world's problems. Dragons, I am Brian with a Y and this is my partner Ken. Hello. And together we are co-founders and directors of Total World Solutions and we would like to present to you today our all-encompassing and also portable solution to all the world's problems. Ken. There's a problem. I've left it in the car. Ken has left the solution to all the world's problems in the car. Would it be all right if I went out to the adventures and got it? No. The dragons are not pleased, and Ken and Brian are now so nervous that they've melted. Have you heard of Michael Gove? Michael Gove. Michael Gove, 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 yes. Do you think the... Sounds like a queer. I was just going to say the very same thing, yes. He does sound like a queer and he looks like a queer. Oh, goodness me, doesn't he look like a queer? Look at him queering away all over your newspaper. Making my paper all queer and queer. I heard him on the wireless this morning. Did he sound like a queer? Oh, he sounded like a frightful queer. He was queering away all over the House of Commons, queering out of my Robert's radio all over my breakfast. Did he queer all over your runny eggs? I had porridge. I met his wife once. She's a fine woman. I wanted to grope her breasts. Did you ask her why she married a queer? No, I wanted to grope her breasts. Have you seen his wife? No. You'd like to grope her breasts. You really would. Right, well, I shall put him down as a queer and add an asterisk here saying, footnote, wife's breasts gropable. Uh, if I could come to you, sir, the gentleman in the red jumper. Yes, well, firstly, if the bank has the bonuses, the bank has the bonuses, it's disgusting. And secondly, if the Tories are really serious about it, they tax the bank as the bonuses to 90%. If all the Eton Tories that went to Harrow School had gone to comprehensives, then perhaps we'd still have the grammar schools, actually. Thank you. That's an original comment. I'm being sarcastic, of course. Now, if you're a moronic whinger and you would like to make a fool of yourself in the Question Time audience with a witless, lame remark, next week we'll be at the former Polytechnic of Grey Buildings, now, of course, Cambridge Ring Road University. But back to tonight and what the audience Think of what they've heard so far. If I could go to you, sir, in the blue tie. Good evening, Jonathan. It's David, my brother's Jonathan. We'll come back to you. Uh, you, sir, at the back in the green pullover, do you have a cliched thought for us? No, just let the microphone get to you. Yes, uh, I just don't understand this Tracy M in art. Thank you. Uh, you, sir, with the sweat. Shall we try again? My question to the panel is, uh, does the panel think... Um, surely if we've all got to pay for them, the ones who... Going to have to leave it there. Gentleman down the front in the blue pullover. Does the panel think that Boris Johnson would make a better Boris Johnson than Boris Johnson? Thank you. The woman in the pink cardigan, the big teeth. If the BBC spent more or less money on better programmes, then it wouldn't be such an insult to the licence fee payer. And, of course, if you are Twitter and Tweet, then you can Twitter and Tweet us here at the BBC, and I, for one, of course, will not look at a word you write. If I could go to the gentleman over there in the funny beige jumper... Wouldn't it be better if the government just admitted he got it wrong? 
Thank you. And the sweaty man. One more go. No? And now our final question, the lame, jokey question, which comes this week from Brian Farnett of Fry and Barnett. Uh, yes, David. Um, if the panel was on I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here, would they make a Jordan or George Osborne eat the slugs? <laughs> <laughs> David Torrey. <laughs> I've never actually... <laughs> but... <laughs> Baroness Token. Phil, I also have never... <laughs> But ha 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 Ed Silliband. Well, I also have never ha 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 but I do think there's an important point to make here, which is the Tories, the Tories, the Tories. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop you there. We're running out of time. David, if you'd allow me to finish my sentence, the Tories. And finally, funny person and comedian who wants to be taken seriously, Jimmy Gag. Anal sex. <laughs> well, we've run out of time, thank God. Next week, our panel includes the Chancellor of the Exchequer, the Chairman of BP and Dappy from NDubs. But from all of us here at the University of Tired Sheffield, good night. <laughs>
James Bond, you're so quick and instinctive. It's as if you were born to be a shop girl. Thank you. So lovely visiting you. Cheerio. Oh, do you have an OBE? No. Oh, you should do. They give them to you chaps these days. Bye. Parking pad to way -o. Parking pad to way -o. Parking pad to way -o. And his black and white cat to way -o. Forget to feed the meter. Pat to way -o's eager to pop a ticket on your car and get you towed away. Good morning, Parking Patawea. It's a lovely day for ticketing hard-working people, isn't it? Here comes Rufa Ronnie. You shouldn't have given me this ticket, he says. The machine is out of order, so I couldn't pay. There's another machine 400 yards up there. Round that corner, then round that corner, then round that corner, Parking Patawea points out helpfully. Well, how am I supposed to know that, you nice person? That's not my concern. Hmm, I intend to appeal against this jolly ticket. Of course, Ruferoni. That's your right and your prerogative. Let me show you how the appeal process works. It looks like Ruferoni's appeal is guaranteed to be unsuccessful, doesn't it, Parking Patawea? Everyone loves Parking Patawea. Ah, oh, Marcus! Nutella. Hi. Hi. How are you? Really, really good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Well, how are you? Really fantastic. Wow. How are you? Really good, well. Wow. <laughs> oh! You've grown a... A wanker's beard, yeah. Do you like it? I do. It actually really works. Thanks. I'm so surprised to see you here at a festival. Yeah, well, I realised the shop was looking a bit thin on the ground at weekends because all you posh thickos were coming out to these rip-offs in a field instead of buying my shit. Exactly. We were at Fleeced last weekend in Suffolk. Mm. Next week we're off to the Cotswolds for more money than cents. Mm. Then it's Cashtonbury, mm. then it's Pay on mm. Y, and finally my mm. favourite, mm. Platitude. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. Buy something. <sighs> Like these. Oh, those, yeah. Those are cheap gum boots, but I painted flowers on them, so I can charge you 30 quid. For a pair? Each. Ah, <gasps> okay. Or you can have three for a hundred. Oh, great. I will take three. Two, three. <sighs> uh, now, Nutella, I don't know if you're interested in legal highs. Well, I say legal highs. Well, uh... Do you mean they're illegal? No, they're not highs. They're dead leaves in a jar. But when you smoke them, they're so disgusting, you feel a bit giddy. God! I feel so 60s, do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, if you like the 60s, you'll like this shit. <gasps> oh, vintage clothes, vintage clothes, vintage clothes. Oh, would you say retro? I'd say they're horrible. You'd probably say they're vintage. What is the difference between vintage and retro? Vintage is old and horrible. Retro is new and horrible, but made to look old and horrible. But the bottom line is I get the whole lot from a car boot sale and sell it to you for a fortune. You're really clever. No, Nutella. You're really, 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 really thick. But I don't look 30, do I? No, Nutella. Oh, thank you, Marcus. Oh, I think my granny's cleaner used to wear one of these. Asia, Africa, come on, bring those things. Oh. Oh, that'll be Alex James coming on. Is he in the indie tent? No, the cheese tent. He's been working on that difficult second cheese. Amazing. Give me an Irish whiskey on the rocks. Make it a double. I drink doubles because I'm a cop. I drink whiskey because I'm a cop. I drink Irish whiskey because I'm an Irish cop. Name's O'Malley Mulligan Hooligy. Come from a small place in Ireland where everyone's a cop. Even the cops are cops. Are you a cop? Too bad. It's goddamn tough being a cop. Today I had a 187. That's a dead body. Yesterday I had a 155. That's a traffic fatality. 
the day before on 29th and 43rd in a restaurant I had a one, two, four. That's a chicken chow mein. Hey, some douchebag pulled a 196 on my ass today. I pulled this guy over on 184th, 185th to give him a 194. He pulled a 196 on my ass. Are you a cop? Sure, I'm a cop. I said to myself, O'Malley, Mulligan, Hooligy, that guy's a cop. He looks like a cop. He talks like a cop. Name's old Pat Henry Flanagan Hoonigan, 48th Precinct. A cop always knows a cop. I'm a cop. I'm a cop. Give me an Irish. Make it a double. You're a cop, huh? Did I ask for ice? Ice is for pussies and cops. I'm a firefighter. 9-11, I was there. Both towers at the same time. You a firefighter? I got a 172, I got to attend. What about you? You a firefighter? I got a 126, I got to eat. So, you're a firefighter, huh? Well, anyway, 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 you're not, can't even afford a decent sack of coal. All the river is in your bunker is a couple of shovelfuls of natty slack. They're embarrassing. Well, anyway, who needs a little dirty old coal? We just had oil-fired central heating put in by Ted Digby. Very capable hands he has. Bet you don't even know what central heating is, do you, Miss Coal Scuttle? Well, it's where your eating is central. That green skirt of yawn rises up and shows your unmentionables. Ooh, central eating isn't now, Miss Silky Draws. Snooty snobs your lot are with their hairs and their graces. Doesn't matter how many bottles of cherry bee your mum glugs down the club, they'll still call her four and a half on the count that she leaves most nights with a couple of sailors. Here, yeah, you going country dancing tonight? No, I'm not, as a matter of fact. I'm staying in and doing my nails. And anyway, there's no need for that kind of talk. That's the language of the snooker all, that is. And anyway, Major Crabtree wants to see me alone in his office on Monday. Probably about a promotion, I shouldn't wonder. Yes, well, anyway, anyway, make sure you get yourself between him and the door. Last time Maisie Moon went in there, he showed her his war wounds, and she ain't been right since. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I have a couple of yearlings running here this afternoon, a two-year-old in the last race. How about you, Fodrick? Well, I was talking to the boys this morning, I got a beautiful one. We're going to get a got a two-year-old, and we're looking for a run in all the house this afternoon. Goodness me, it sounds like you're in pretty good shape. Well, not too bad. As I said, I was talking to the boys anyway. I like to have a run, you know, and we're really looking for a beautiful day for the houses. A beautiful day for the houses. Well, you threw the words right out of my mouth there, Fodrick. It really is a beautiful day, as it always seems to be at this meeting. We really are very privileged to have animals running here today. Now, do you think we'll see a repeat of last year's 330? You're looking rather pensive, Podrick. Penny for your fault. Very, very difficult thing for me to say, but I'm shagging your wife. Ah, but I think you're a tosser. I think you're a tosser. Who are you to hear? The fact of the matter is, I'm shagging your wife. Well, I can see where you're coming from, Podrick, but I'm shagging your wife as only ever one over six furlongs. I think today's leg favours your horse. I think you're a tosser. <laughs> Hey, you know, here's the way you look at it. Now you know what it is. I think you're a silly cunt. I certainly am. Your Rasalik Hunt is the Emir's favourite horse. I think my reputation with the Dubai royal family rests on him coming in for me. So I certainly am very nervous, yes. Now, how's your daughter getting on? Did you hear the tale the the day, Well, you know, it's always a very difficult choice to do the choice of school. You know, it's very well, say, primary, but we managed to get an attempt to play in his college. Oh, uh, it's a wonderful school, wonderful school. Very convenient for the race course. Very convenient for the race course, of course. Very, very convenient for the race course. It is very, very convenient for the race course, of course. Yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful school. One day the supermarket priests will gather together in a huddle. Bring us the man who took the last bananas, they will say. Put a cardboard box down on his head. A feathery light cardboard box through which the light cannot penetrate. Put him outside on the chair with a box on his head. And such a soft evening. What a beautiful sunset, but not for you, the man with the box on his head. Leave him there with the box on his head while we supermarket priests have a lazy time lying about and looking at the sunset. Oh, 
What a beautiful sunset. Ah, oh, I'm really enjoying it. But all you can see is very close up, shady car. I curse you. Now, Charles, did you see that programme on your late father-in-law last night? I was intending to watch it on the BBC iPlayer tonight. Were they fair to him? Oh, yes, he came across as a thoroughly good egg. The way he brokered that peace deal between the Matabele and the Shona set the standard for diplomacy in Africa that has never been equaled. Oh, he was a very good egg. Very good egg. Very good egg. Very good egg. Very good egg, yes. Very, very good egg. Talking of very good eggs, I took my granddaughter to see this flat owned by the actor Jeremy Irons. He came across as a very pleasant egg indeed. <laughs> yes, I've heard that he's a very pleasant egg, and I believe that he's currently at the Hampstead Theatre working with Sir Peter Hall's son, Edward. Oh, yes, Edward Hall, yes, yes. Apparently he's a thoroughly decent egg, yes, as his father is these days. <laughs> yes, Sir Peter is a very good egg these days, although, of course, in the past he has been a bit of a beastly egg. Yes, he did go through a period of egg beastliness, didn't he? Before becoming rather an avant-garde egg, and then rather a flamboyant egg. But age has matured him into a decent, dependable egg. <laughs> yes. Now, Charles, I've got to remove a polyp in half an hour from the inner sanctum of that malodorous little Ed egg balls. Did you hear what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> I do apologise, Charles. Sometimes I do speak a lot of balls. I would assist you with your polyp balls up, but I'm having dinner with Her Majesty and her curate's egg of a husband. <laughs> I didn't hear that, Charles. You didn't hear that, Sheridan? Oh, I went to see Grace Stone, the medium, on Friday night. She's part Romany. She told me to look out for a man with a cleft palate, a hair lip and a club foot. Imagine. Yes, well, anyway, 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 that Jenny Jenkins, she went out with that boy who works down the fish shop on Saturday. You know, the one that looks like a fish. He took her to see Moby Dick, that film about the big fish. Apparently, all he talked about was fish, and he smelled of fish. And on the way home, they bought fish and chips, but he only ate the fish. When she got in, she looked in her coat pocket, she found a fish. Gave her the eebie-jeebies, it did. That night, apparently, she had a nightmare about being a fish. And she woke up on the floor, all wrapped up in her blankets, like a fish. They're engaged now, apparently. See you in church on Sunday. ta, -da. ta -da. Who's this here? Goodness me, it's Parking Pleasant. Hello, Parking Pleasant. Are you feeling pleasant today? Hello, Parking Pleasant. I'm just popping into the hairdresser to make an appointment for tomorrow. I'll only be a minute or so. Do I need to buy a ticket? Of course not. The ticket machine only allows a minimum of 60p for 10 minutes, and you're not going to be long at all. So even though you're technically in contravention of paragraph 14 of section 27 of the Road Traffic Enforcement Act of 2003, it would be petty and pointless of me to insist on you purchasing a ticket. Oh, thank you, Parking Pleasant. What a pleasant man you are. Just doing my bit for the big society. That was a mystifying encounter, wasn't it, Parking Patawea? Everyone loves Parking Patawea. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Do you have a flight to Africa? Why, certainly, sir. I should like a ticket, please. Very well. I'll write one out for you. It would be three guineas, please, if you'd be so kind. Send the bill to my club, White's at Pall Mall, if you'll be so kind. Indeed, sir. Now, do you have any bags? Oh, just those. And my guns, of course. I should like to take everything with me into the cabin. That way, during the flight, I can fiddle with triggers and things. Wait out that your bags will fit in the overhead lockers. The porters can wedge them in the aisles in front of the emergency exits. Splendid. Now, what time does the plane leave? Five minutes, sir. Oh, that won't do at all, I'm afraid. Tell the pilot he'll have to delay it while I buy whiskey and cigarettes. Very good, sir. I'll telephone him immediately. I say, tell the pilot to buy the whiskey and cigarettes for me. That way I can board the plane immediately and get on with the business of fiddling with guns. That's a very good idea, sir. It is a no-no smoking flight, isn't it? Oh, yes, sir. All our flights are no-no smoking. It's mandatory to smoke to calm the nerves. It's a nervous business flying. It certainly is, sir. After all, 50% of our flights crash. <laughs>
Have a pleasant flight, sir. The airplane's just through that door there. <laughs> Plol. Plol. Har Troll som er sin tele? Det er bare beskjed jeg hører den nå litt ned opp når jeg er med meg og alle den. Til meg sin tele er jeg at jeg blir beskjed. Alf Jolftob. Alf Jolftob? Vi har sånn til meg en se Alf Jolftob. Nå kaller jeg meg hjemme, og for det fikk jeg meg ned hjemme, og får ikke den brev når den greper ned fra oss hjemme der. Det blir beskjed fukt opp, eh? Takk, det blir beskjed en fukt opp. Hei. Samuel. Takk. Vi er sånn uene hva sånn øret er sånn. Nå er det her, men det er sånn, men det er sånn. Og hva er det ikke det de fukte opp hos andre? Nå må vi nå, ja. Åh, da må vi nå, ja. Smink, Pep! Smink, Pep! Min mamma sier at han må si det. Smink, Pep! Nå er det her, men det er sånn, jeg hører. Hva er det vi er på alle heden her? Hvor kan høbel da løbel døbel tå? More comedy coming up next. Stay with us for a trip to heaven here on BBC HD. Are